the folks in from Kintech. Yeah, Caitlin's doing the sun run, and so we've taken off the pumps from her feet, mm -hmm. replaced them with the comfortable socks. That's oh, right. yes, these and are the ones you swear by, so. Yeah, do, and how, what do you think? I, yeah. They are actually pretty like I didn't. <laughs> that's one thing I have learned about the sunrun training is the importance of socks for running. Yes. Socks. I just would yeah. wear whatever I bought. The Cotton package. socks or whatever. Those yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. Those are good. Apparently, you have to have special socks. Irwin's horrified right now. Socks and <laughs> shoes. So Irwin Pegged again is here from Kintech to talk about the different kinds of shoes and I guess socks. Too. I don't know if you have one to weigh in on the socks, but for sure. Yeah. yeah. So um, there's so many socks. shoes and socks out there. Tons of shoes. I mean, the main thing with any sun run training program or, or pavement running is considering that we need to have a certain amount of support and a certain amount of cushioning, especially mm -hmm. as you're pounding away on the pavement. Now, these socks, though, we, we brought in some, some, some socks here. So tell us that what makes a, a running sock different from something you would just grab to use, you know, going to play basketball or whatever it is. Yeah, well, basically, you want to have socks that do not contain cotton. Uh, we say a thing at Kintec, uh, cotton is rotten. <laughs> it, caps heat, it caps heat and moisture on your feet. These help mo moist, uh, wick moisture away and keep things uh, more comfortable for your feet and prevent blistering. Oh, okay. But they, I mean, they get really high tech with them, right? So you've got some that, um, I don't know, they claim to have extra padding in certain places or... Yeah, there are socks that have different cushioning in different mm -hmm. zones, especially mm -hmm. at the heel and the forefoot area. But mm -hmm. really, and, and some of them actually have some tightness around the arc to give a bit of that added padding through there. All right. So let's talk, let's talk about shoes. Caitlin, what kind of concerns do you have about running? Um, the pavement that you said, this is, it's an all pavement run and I've had shin splint problems even in my training. So I, I need something that's going to help make sure I get through it. Yeah, we see a lot of injuries coming through all the time, whether it's uh, for sun run training or any pavement running in general. And, and the main thing is we need to know what your mechanics are like, so we assess how you uh, you walk and how you run on our mm -hmm. um, video capture system. But, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, the one thing they do at Kintec is they literally put you on a treadmill and, and everything is videoed, and both Sophie and I have done it, and it just shows kind of how you walk and, and how you go. But as far as some of the shoes you brought in, I mentioned these these Nike free ones here, and, and a lot of people are wearing it. I see them everywhere, and, and, uh, and they and then also we've got some other running shoes as well. So as far as, uh, let's talk guys first, um, you know, what are you looking for in a shoe? Um, there's a lot of structural components involved in this shoe. Definitely the outsole and the midsole comes into play in terms of um, traction, especially okay. if it's on wet, wet surfaces, if it's going to be a rainy day that day. Mm -hmm. um, and then the midsole is where you get all the cushioning and support from through this area here. Um, there's definitely your standard type shoes, your traditional shoes that are built on what's called a, a standard um, pitch, okay. um, which is a heel to toe ratio. And then you get into things like the Nike Freeze, which are very popular, um, but definitely more kind of your, towards your minimalist grade type of shoe, which may not be for everybody. Okay. Okay, so, yeah, I've tried running in those and it's it doesn't work for me. It Have seems like it, it might hurt. I haven't tried it, but that doesn't seem like it's going to give me the support I need for a, a 10K pavement run. Yeah, yeah, throw a couple of shoes on there because we, okay. we brought which in do you think Caitlin's size, so... Try on. Do, what are these? These ones are different. They look a little odd, Ermin. They, yeah. You know what? They, they kind of look like the Spice Girl shoes I used they to do. wear. Yeah. Yeah. Back in the day, yeah. Okay, do so you use these yourselves, Ermin? Uh, yeah, so I use yeah. the uh, trail versions for my, uh, my, all my trail running. Um, the Hoka, uh, that one's the Bondi specific one, has a really huge midsole. So this, mm -hmm. the cushioning there is actually you know, quite a bit more compared wow. to the other shoes. Yeah. And when you're talking about uh, pounding away on the pavement, you're going to feel all the extra cushioning, which is really pay off as you get towards Ooh. kilometer nine, kilometer ten. Does it feel like walking on a cloud? A bit? Yeah, it does feel like, you know, it makes me taller too. So, <laughs> <laughs> all about that. so for sh for her shin splints, is that something? I know you you want to assess her gait using the technology that you guys have at Kintech, but just in general, is that a an impact thing that that's going on with her? Yeah, there's definitely an impact issue. Um, also, wearing old shoes or improper shoes mm -hmm. can cause shin splints, and definitely the mechanics the way that your feet move will play a role in that as well I think I was taking too long strides too so mm. I'm learning to shorten them and probably yeah better shoes <laughs> yeah better shoes How do those feel they feel different can I yeah walk around? Cool. oh wow they do feel they feel they lighter than I thought they would like they look kind of heavy kind of clunky, bulky, right? yeah. but they're really light they're just as light as any other shoes out in the market well, as well. those ultra marathoners they they have shoes that are even bigger than that right like, um they're, they're roughly seven. around the same yeah uh, I haven't seen myself anything that's too much bigger but uh, right. those are kind of one of the ones now out what there. about the ones you got the, the ones yeah try those ones on these ones are yeah the, either one yeah the zero what are they all? zero drop yeah zero drop. What, what's, what's unique about those um so unique about that shoe is it's going towards kind of that minimalist grade where you're looking at a zero drop so again that's the heel to toe ratio okay um so a drip zero drop means it's completely flat however it's not like the um, Vibram Five Fingers that are, you know, very mm -hmm. no cushioning at yeah, all. They actually <laughs> have your standard amount of cushioning that you would from your other traditional running shoes. So it's light, 
but still has more cushion. And the idea with the zero drop is to help with your efficiency with running. You're talking about overstriding, mm -hmm. and that could be one of the reasons that may can, um, affect your shin pain, your shin splints. So okay. this may be something that could help. Now, what about something that, now you brought these as well. Now, what about throwing these into shoes? I mean, is that something when you're training for a sun run you might look at? Definitely, yes. Uh, if, if the mechanics call for it, if someone needs a bit of added support, whether it's from over the counter or we even have some of the custom versions here, um, these things will all play a role into right. helping out. With are that. these ones okay for people who are, are not like you know serious runners? Are they just sort of starting out, picking up new, and they're not sure if they're going to like it? Will these be okay for someone it's, to use? It's probably better for someone like that to start oh, off is that with right? them. Okay. Yeah, just to get them used to wearing an insole, wearing something at added support because it's different right. once you have it in and, there. Yeah, and it may, it, you feel different. And sometimes you'll get like little pains. You go, "What's causing it?" It's just because you're wearing something new in just there. Just getting used to it. Yeah, basically. Okay. Now, do you have to get those when you get your shoes because you have to adjust the size? Like, I put insoles in my old running shoes, and they're way too small now. We try everything together, so we make sure together. that everything matches and fits your foot accordingly. Okay. And finally, uh, let's, uh, if she gets set for the sun run, what about uh, flip-flops? Because we had some beautiful weather this weekend, and I saw them everywhere. So um, I noticed you've got some different ones in here. Yeah, basically we look at these that have also added support in it. They have an anatomical footbed and an arch support. And the reason we use these mostly um, outside of just regular summer weather is for recovery. Oh, okay. But you're pounding away at the pavement, you want to get your shoes off, get something supportive, but also cushioned and comfortable at the same time. So bring those for the finish line. For the finish line, <laughs> yeah. Have someone bring it for you or, yeah. or keep it in your car, yeah. Okay, because oh, wow. flip-flops are like the worst thing you can wear usually, right? Yeah, and everyone wants to get out of their shoes and wear your regular flip-flops, but these are the ones that will give you the support and cushioning you need. And don't wear your brand new shoes on, for the first time on the day of the race. No, don't try anything new, brand new. <laughs> <laughs> Stick to what you know. Well, Sophie's doing, a, Sophie's doing a bike race, then the Tough Mudder, and then another race after that, so... Uh... You might just want to take all this right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, one, one race at a time, right? Yeah, that's right. I can make it through. <laughs> well, we're with you, Caitlin. I know that you've had some, some shin splint problems, but uh, keep it up and uh, give you some more information now as you get set to go forward, and we'll see what happens. Hopefully. Ervin, thanks so much. Good <laughs> to see you, you again. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah, thanks to all the well. folks at Kintech. Thanks. All right, we'll take a quick break here on the morning news and check in with Amber Belzer in our chopper. Amber?